Hello, it's Stacey from the Loom Room France here and welcome to my studio. It's September now and what a strange summer it's been. I'd, I don't know about you, but I found myself really energised during confinement and um, yeah, really, really full of energy, full of inspiration. And then in July, I launched my Beneath the Surface book on uh, stitch double cloth creating lovely textural surfaces, which is my total passion. Um, yeah, using double cloth in this instance. And that was great. Thank you so much for the people who've, who've bought a copy and have given me such wonderful feedback and how much it's, you're enjoying it. And uh, yeah, so August I took off. I had a holiday. I did some reading. We didn't go anywhere because it made sense not to go anywhere, really, whilst everybody's still very much in the case of COVID circulating. So yes, took August off and uh, and continued all the time with my How I Got Into Weaving guest blog. Can I say a big thank you to the people who have already featured on that blog posting, which is once every two weeks. I have had some wonderful weavers. Basically, the idea behind it was that the first thing you do as a weaver when you meet another weaver is you want to know how that person got into weaving. So I always ask it. <laughs> I think we mostly do, don't we? And I've asked lots of people whom, who I admire, I really admire and respect and um, have looked up to in many cases for many years. And so we've had a really lovely group of people so far. The people are so willing to share their stories. And so far we've had Daryl Lancaster and Lillian Whipple, both from the US. Then a couple from the UK, Anne Richards and Janet Phillips. And then Bonnie Inouye, who was hugely influential for me uh, from the US. Jenny Parry, who's a fabulous braider from the UK. Laura Fry, who has always inspired me and, and given me lots to think about with ergonomics and things. She's such a productive weaver. She's retired now, but I don't think she's slowing down much. <laughs> then there's Catherine Amaday we've had. She's a fabulous jacquard weaver from the States. And then Rosalie Nielsen last time, who is warp rep, who's known for her warp rep and produced a wonderful book called The Exaltation of Blocks, which is all about designing with blocks and uh, giving us so many permutation of of, of block arrangements. And I think this is one of a really, really important design tool. And I was lucky enough to attend a couple of classes that she did and found it very, very useful. Anyway, so I've got lots and lots of brilliant weavers coming up um, and even more that are in the pipeline that I haven't yet asked. But I do hope I, <laughs> if you're watching this and I ask you, please, please, please say yes. <laughs> anyway, this coming week, we have Leah Cook who was the first jacquard weaver, I think, that I really saw her work and thought, oh, my word, this was way before I got into jacquard weaving. Um, not that I've done a lot of jacquard in the last few years, I have to say, with moving and, and um, you know, just transporting looms and, and things, and um, I've not really been focusing much on that this year either. But I'm wanting to get back to it. It's, I've got the urge to get back to the jacquard. Anyway, after Leah, I mean, her work is just amazing, Many weavers will know of Alice Schlein, uh, Agnes Herkley. These aren't in any particular order. They're just um, a little list that I've, I've compiled just to let you know who's coming up. Janice Lesman Moss is coming up. Laura Thomas from Wales. Marion Strabinitsky from Holland. Sally Ehring with her dimensional fabrics, but uh, she's talking the story of how she got into weaving. Wendy Morris from the UK. Susie Taylor, weaving origami. Um, Vibeka Vestby, the creator of the amazing digital jacquard looms, the TC series, the thread controller series from Norway. Uh, Catalina Koenig, who many people won't know from the UK, but who's a partner in crime with me now. We're working on woven optical illusions together. Kathy Weir from the States. Uh, Callie Booker from Scotland. So that just gives you a, f a sort of taste of the sort of weavers I've got coming and, and contributing to my uh, my guest blog, and I'm so delighted. So you can go to www.theloomroomfrance.com or you can go to www.theloomroom.co.uk and I'm forward slash blog. I'm in the process of trying to change the website address through to theloomroomfrance.com since I'm here now. Um, but we'll, yeah, that's taking a little bit of time because I'm not technical and uh, there's a little bit of technique 
technical stuff in that. And the other thing I wanted to tell you about today, um, I've got a little four shaft loom sitting here and that's, um, I'm threading up here. It's for a cultural weekend. The French do love their culture. I'm so glad they do because they're highly supporting it during this time. And um, it's called the Journée du Patrimoine. Well, patrimoine. I've probably pronounced that horribly. Sorry, anybody who can speak French well. Sorry. And to all my French friends. Anyway, it's a cultural heritage weekend and all the various museums, museums across the country and people who are working in the heritage crafts right, right across the field of heritage crafts are opening their studios or appearing in sort of um, salons together, doing demonstrations and all sorts of things. And I'm going to be doing that this weekend. And I'm doing a very simple uh, tube, kind of seersucker effect tube. And I'm doing it on four shafts because that means I don't have to think too hard about what I'm doing. So I can concentrate on speaking in French, <laughs> which is always a challenge for me, but it's, it's getting better bit by bit each week. So I, I'm you know, talking to people, explaining what I'm doing, what it's all about. And then I should be at the end of the weekend, I'm going to be taking them, excuse me, a couple of pieces that I did last time I did demonstration in August. If you'll excuse me, I'll reach over and get this other one. Oh, and they kind of look like this. And this you can do just on four shafts, so it's good fun. And the other one I did on the same warp last time round was that. I love the texture. Ah, oh, goes mad. So this time I'm in including a little bit of Lurex. I don't know if you can see that if I go closer, if it's glinting in the light. Oopsie. Can you see that? Can you see that glinting? If you can, great. If you can't, I'm sorry, but it is there. Uh, which gave a few challenges in the in the um, beaming, putting on the, on the loom. Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope that's not waffled on too long. How many minutes? Oh, seven minutes. Sorry, folks. <laughs> I'll do a couple of, uh, oh, well, maybe one video from the weekend so that you can see the location we're in and, and the sorts of beautiful artwork that we've got in this area. And uh, yes, I'll post that sometime next week. In the meantime, wherever you are in the world watching this, thank you for being with me. And thank you for being so patient and for asking me to do some more. <laughs> and uh, until next time, happy weaving. Bye for now. Bye bye.